she's in train to go to the barn for milking as she does now. She just walks down there and waits for us. But we're actually doing something different. We're getting her to nurse the calf out in the pasture. Uh, we're training her to do that instead, so she's a little bit like, what is going on? I need to go find the fly spray. Why were you eating goose poop? He was eating goose poop? He was eating goose poop. Maybe there's something in there he needs. How does he look to you? It's so hard for me to tell. Let's see what he does. I mean, he never seems super hungry. So I'm wondering if he's getting to nurse, even though she does that. But I'm wondering if he's sneaking in when the little calf is nursing. Her udder just looks empty, so I'm wondering if they already nurse. Well, we won't really know is if her milk production is dropping off or if he's just drinking it all until we separate, like you said. There's some milk in there, but typically in the mornings when we come out, she has a nice full udder. Here's for some fresh poo from the new calf. Over this weekend, you'll remember from our last video, the calf was scaring us. At this point, a calf's poop on milk is supposed to look more like regular cow poop. Brownish green, transitioning from yellow when they, in the first few days. And this is not normal, but this is much better than what was happening on Friday, which was gushes of water, um, di just pure diarrhea. So I guess we're happy to let you know that over this weekend, that let up. I think he stayed hydrated and our concern for him imminently getting in trouble because he was going to get dehydrated is past for right now. And he's nursing well, pooping, peeing. Seems like he's doing well and he's playful. Yeah, I mean this calf seems fine to me. He is playful, frolicking, running around, nursing, peeing, pooping. So if something is up, I mean, what are we to say? We, we wouldn't know that anything was wrong right now other than his white poop. But from what I read, that is still a normal thing with a calf transitioning from formula to cow's milk. I guess it means the, poop, the milk is kind of running through him still. Yeah, he's probably drinking too much, honestly. She's still not the most friendly to him and is still driving him away. But I think I think he's nursing out here. I kind of think he might be too. Just because of the amount of poop and pee that he's having and... And because her udder looks like two calves are drinking out of it. Yeah. Because that little calf just can't drink the volume that she has. I think what we need to do is just be out here watching. Maybe work on some beans or something and just sit out here and watch. Thanks, little brown calf. We need to name her. <laughs> I know. We need to name her calves. <laughs> we're just slow going at it. Part of the reason we're so slow in naming calves is because there's so many voices in the process. If it was just you and me, I would probably not care and you would pick the names and we'd just be like, <laughs> it would be done. But everyone has everyone, ideas. All and, the kids have opinions and ideas. And, so we're a little slow. And the reason we haven't named our Holstein um, calf is because we're just waiting to see, make sure he lives, make sure he's here to stay before we name him. And then, then we'll move, remove his ear tag. I think we can do that. I feel like there's laws against removing ear tags, but I think it's okay if you're just raising him out for meat. Uh, I don't think there's laws about it. I think there's law. I think we, he probably can't travel without him. No, he can't travel without him, but he's not traveling anywhere. So anyway, we're just gonna leave him on until we know for sure. All is well with him and he'll get a name and get his ear tags removed. All right, we're done with that little milking exercise. Now she's gonna walk down to the barn for actual milking. Grace is out there taking the goats to the woods. The calf just pooped. We're gonna go look at that because that's the most fresh right there. Here's his poop. It's looking closer to baby cow poop, a little greenish. That's really good. Here's the way this works. Now that Grace is milking the goats, which she's milking regularly and we're milking the cow. The goats have to get out of the barn just logistically and go to the woods and then it's Bri and I's turn to take the cow into the barn and milk. So things have to be coordinated. Grace starts pretty early. 
we jump in right behind her and milk. And then the reverse happens in the evening, depending on if we're putting the cow in the stanchion or not. His poop actually looked green a second ago when I saw it. Greenish brown. Good, so it's probably switching over. Looks yeah, good. It's really good. The poop of calves is still a little bit confusing to me. Mainly because it's it's hard to find a lot of information about the transition poops. I probably should go on the family cow board and ask from people who have switched calves over. And double check that. All the colors of the calf poop rainbow. Justice is on his way to feed the pigs. He's been super faithful with that job. And he's big enough now that he's got a legit animal chore. And I think it's something he needed and he enjoys it. He actually says it's really fun. And I'm really glad that we have the pigs and that he can take responsibility for feeding them. I still remind him every day, but he does really, really well once he jumps on it. And he's probably the pig's best friend. It's a rainy day, and so we're kind of cooped up in the camper a little bit. We're eating a beautiful cucumber salad. It's cucumbers, tomato, onions, and basil from our garden, so it's really yummy. It's extra yummy. And hamburger patties from our own meat. Hey, how's that food? You're a man of few words and many thumbs up. <laughs> what are you working on? I just ran up to the garden to see if there were any cucumbers because I often forget to pick the cucumbers and then this is what happens. But I did get enough for a half enough of the right size for a half gallon of fermented pickles. This will be my third half gallon. So it's nice because I just quickly do this and then I'm done with it. I've been trying to do a little bit of um, food preservation almost every day. There he goes. Apart from being reassured by kind of general medical stuff, that's the most reassuring thing to me in this whole situation is that he feels good enough to play. We have a little problem with our ferments happening right now and we, we already found the solution, so yeah. I'm gonna show you both. Um, when I stuffed these beans down in this jar, they were well under the brine. Newbie mistake, I didn't put the fermenting weight on top because I thought, oh, they'll stay under the brine, but now they're all soaking in and shrinking a bit and popping up from the brine, which will end up in them going bad. So... Molding. Yeah. Out of the brine. Yeah, and so, um, because Arthur's usually the fermenter, I'm just learning this year, and he wasn't here really when I did this. So the solution is just to use these little tiny canning jars and you stick them down in there and it holds the beans down under the brine. You can buy fermenting weights, but these are way cheaper. This was $10 for a dozen. I think fermenting weights are $12 for eight. So, um, or maybe even less than that, maybe four. So you just wash these really good, hot soapy water, and then I'm gonna stick them down in there and make sure all the beans are under the brine. And then I'm gonna stuff this down in there and let a little bit more come out. And I'll even pour out just a little bit more. You gotta be careful not to pour out all your all your good brine there. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe this off. Just keep everything kind of clean. Now I'm just checking to see that all the beans, garlic are under the brine, and they are. So that one's good to go. One of the joys of fermenting pulling your food out as you ferment. They're so good. They're really, really good. 
Mm. I could eat them like that. How many more days do you want to ferment them? Two or three. Mm. Then they'll go in the fridge. And I'll have done my first fermenting! Yay! I've always been afraid to do this. And I actually didn't even ever like ferments. That's why Arthur did it, because I didn't like them. But then I had fermented, like, cucumbers and dilly beans and carrots and salsa. And I was like, oh my goodness, I like ferments. Do you even eat sauerkraut now? Yeah, I can even eat sauerkraut now. As long as it's not really old sauerkraut. It's still crunchy. We don't eat our Okay, I ate a potato. No, you can't eat a potato right now. No, I'm not a potato. You are in here. Get out of here. No. Yeah. Okay, good. Stay out of there. There's broken glass in there, okay? What is it? You need to ask before you use things. Make sure we're not using them. Are you working on something? Yeah, sure. Let me tell you what's going on here. We recently realized that all of our feed in this room is at risk for being ruined. We've always kept our feed in this basement feed room, and it's great because it has these concrete walls. It's very well protected. We've had a ton of rain this summer, though, and this room has always been a little damp, but there's now mildew on the outside of some of the feed bags. We've realized if we don't do something right away, we may actually have $500 of ruined feed on our hands. So we're getting it out of this room and actually taking it upstairs, which is a significantly drier place. I tried installing a fan in the window and just keeping air moving through this room, but it just wasn't enough. And the floor is just extremely damp in here. There's really no leaks from above. There's not really water coming down into the room. It's just coming through the soil. And so there's no standing water. It's just that the floor is so damp that the air is damp and it's too much for keeping feed in. So the feed's gonna go out of this room until we can figure out. It's a ton of value of feed too. A lot of it's organic. This is the non-GMO pig feed. That's not enough for what we're doing. And then a bunch of organic cow and goat food over here. We've never really bought organic food because it's so expensive and the fact that we have a bunch of organic food in here just means it's incredible risk for loss. And we actually bought quite a bit of head, not weeks, months. Months, but the reason we're able to is because someone in our community started a co-op and that's how we're able to afford it and get it here. But the, the basically having all this feed though, it's a great asset, but it's also a huge risk because if, yeah. it, if it gets all mildew and mold, moldy, we can't feed it to most of the animals. It's yeah. possible you keep feeding it to the pigs, but you can make your animals quite sick yeah. feeding them moldy food. So we're getting it all up to a drier area. Are you having fun while we're working? Mm -hmm. You having a lot of fun? What are you doing? I'm playing the bath. Yeah, you're spraying. You think you're in pretty good shape and just run up and down a hill with these 50 pound bags. What's your surprise, big man? What you got? He likes to surprise mommy. Oh. Call Chef away. <laughs> one. Mom, can I please crack this one on the road so it's so dirty? If daddy says you can. Can I? Give it to the pigs. No. You can crack it in the pig bin. Ooh. No. Crack. Last run up the hill. Alrighty. It may not seem like that much feed, but it'll actually last a long time. Each of those bags, at the current rate we're feeding the pigs, of this front pig food here, will last 10 days. It's 11 bags. 
Now granted, we feed him more and more every day, so it goes faster and faster. All right, it's all up. You feel better? Yeah. Right back now the animal food is right beside our food. Interestingly. Oh my goodness. Now do so. that again. Good job. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. The potatoes look good and the onions look awesome. Yeah, we gotta remind the kids not to play with this stuff. The onions are drying perfectly. Looking good, looking good. I know, I'll get those fries off you. Come here. I can't believe he'll just let you do anything to him. This calf is so well handled. He does not look empty at all. Or hungry. Or hungry. I still want to see him nurse. I want to see him nurse when she's not tied. I want to see him just nursing out in the pasture. And her udder looks pretty empty too. Look at this. I mean, it's not totally empty, but it looks pretty empty. I say we just don't even make, try to make him nurse right now, and we watch. See what happens in the morning. And we watch tomorrow. Since he doesn't seem interested in eating, I'm gonna let him off and or let her off and see what she does when she's closer to him. Yeah, I know you don't love this. Do. Go over to them. Okay, this thing is nursing. Let's see what he does. He might have figured out if he nurses while she nurses, he'll get some. Like I can just, pah, I just swallowed a bug. Pah, pah. Here, you hold that. I'm so happy. Oh yeah. I am so relieved. I'm so relieved. I'm so thankful. How do you feel? I'm happy. He figured it out. He's got a nurse when the calf nurses. I think that's just what he's been doing probably. Yep. All along. Well, at least the last few days. Yeah, and after they both nursed this morning, I got less than a gallon, so they're definitely getting the milk, because she gives four plus gallons. She has four, four gallons at a milking, four in the morning, like three in the evening, when they're, she doesn't have the babies taking the milk, so. They're stealing all our milk now. I know that's what we wanted. When do we think about separating? Um, I want to not separate for probably like a week. I want to give them time to really solidify that bond. What do you think? We can name him now. Remember at the beginning of the video we said we weren't going to name him yet. We're just going to wait and make sure it all works out. We get to go on vacation. It's true. End of movie, end of show. Get the kids to go finish their chores and go feed them. That's what I just said. That's what you said we should say. That's not what I meant. Oh.
It's been another great day on the homestead. It really has. This is such a relief and I'm so thankful. How do you feel about the calf nursing? Good. That's all you're getting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm very exuberant. He's like, it's good. <laughs> um, yeah, we're done. Thanks guys for joining us. We'll see you again soon. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.